Good evening, and tonight on the big match, this is our lineup for you. The main match is Liverpool against Tottenham at Anfield. There's a quick look at Chelsea against Swansea City, and then Middlesbrough against the leaders Aston Villa. And this is a full-blooded battle in a blizzard with a wonderful finish to it. And of course, all the latest news, beginning with the headlines from Jim Rosenthal. Malcolm Allison's back at the foot of the first division. His new team, Crystal Palace, are well beaten at Nottingham Forest. And to make things even worse, everyone else in the bottom six avoids defeat. There are away wins for Leicester and for Leeds. Meantime, promotion favourites West Ham set a club record 15 home wins on the trot. But first it's the action from the first division. Liverpool against Tottenham and Spurs fans must be getting a little tired of being told that their team went north for this game, not having won at Anfield since 1912. But it's a fact. There was also a welcome fact for Liverpool supporters today that Terry McDermott, the England midfield player, has agreed to sign a new contract tying him to Liverpool for the next two years. Commentator, Gerald Sinstad. It's an untrained Liverpool team that Terry McDermott plays in here. The only serious doubt was defender Colin Irwin, who broke his nose on Tuesday night in the League Cup tie against Birmingham, but he's had it reset and makes his seventh appearance of the season. Tottenham, they make one change from the lineup that played in the League Cup on Tuesday when they were beaten by West Ham. Terry Yorath broke a finger in training yesterday and that lets in Graham Roberts, who was signed from Southern League Club Weymouth. His four previous appearances were all as a substitute. Steve Archibald on the left there and Garth Crooks are the players Spurs will be looking to to spearhead their bid to improve their dismal record at Anfield. Together, these two have scored 23 goals this season, 12 to Archibald, 11 to Crooks. David Johnson kicks off for Liverpool in their all-red strip. No clash of colours. And the first touch for Barry Davis. Bottle. Archibald pinched from him by Sunis. Alan Kennedy. Sammy Lee coming on a run and Danes will have to come and kick. Irwin. Neil. McDermott. Sunis. Hansen. Today's referee, Mr. Alan Seville from Birmingham. Side free kick for Spurs. And Sunis. Harry Danes has been 12 and a half years at White Hart Lane, but spent a lot of it in the shadow of Pat Jennings. Irwin couldn't get away with that. Arm hooked over Archibald's shoulder and eventually pulled him. here is that Glenn Hoddle might curl one over the top and drop it in the corner. It's something he does with marvellous precision. And in fact it was Villa and he very nearly pulled it off. Problems for goalkeepers when a team has as many dead ball specialists as Spurs have. 
Villa curling that one with the left foot. Clemens was across, but it was a good effort. Dalglish. No offside. And a little stabbing punch by Danes saves the day for Spurs. Hewton. For Crocs now. Irwin above. Soonis. Irwin to Hansen. Hansen setting off on a run. Phil Neal covering for him in the middle. Ball comes loose to Alan Kennedy. Now Johnson. But Dermot back to Johnson. Johnson's shot in. 1 0. for a goal that could hardly have seemed on ball comes out here to Alan Kennedy there's some fine sharp passing goes on here Johnson McDermott puts him back in with a lovely ball but look how narrow the angle was and how precise the shot was so that's David Johnson putting Liverpool 1-0 in front The memory of this long, long run without success at Anfield begins to haunt Spurs again. David Johnson having scored his tenth goal of the season. It was the uh, 16th of March 1912 that Tottenham last won on this ground. Since then they've had 22 defeats here and 15 draws Ardiles Archibald was offside but Hewton had stayed back and Danes has to head clear McDermott will try and beat him and Roberts rescues his side there was the offside trap failing to work because one man stayed back and created problems of all kinds for the goalkeeper Danes forced to head out McDermott read the situation very quickly beat the goalkeeper header, Dalglish, Ray Kennedy in the middle with McDermott, Hoddle getting it out to Roberts. Brooks, Perryman, on our dealers referees upraised arm indicates obstruction and direct free kick and Perryman takes it Lacey's header Adam Kennedy bustling away to get it out of the area soon as carrying it on Alan Kennedy offside David Johnson just went on and planted it in the net to show what he thought of the tactics Archibald and 
and it just went outside or did it go in? It's gone in. I thought it had gone outside the post, but Archibald has equalised. Long one in, missed by Irwin. A lot of space here for Archibald, and it was deflected inside the post, one all. Steve Archibald, the scorer, no, there was a deflection. Archibald's 13th goal of the season. Soonis. Ray Kennedy. This is high and hopeful clearance. Header by Hansen. Ray Kennedy. Dalgleish turning it to McDermott. And back. And Dalgleish now. No penalty, says the referee. Roberts challenge. Hansen. Soonis. Neil to Lee. Johnson, click on for McDermott. Ray Kennedy to Alan Kennedy with space. Roberts times the challenge well then. Dalgleish in there and Lee to take the corner this time. Dalgleish up, Danes only caught it at the second attempt. But he has it safely now. Well given and a free kick to Liverpool. Lee. Johnson. We see the defender. Lee. Neil. Hansen to go a long way to collect Alan Kennedy stopped by Hoddle Hansen stopped by Archibald and the rebound has fallen well for Archibald Crook streaking through the middle taking the pass but couldn't control it and would have liked it played just a little bit more firmly Archibald making the most of a rebound after he'd come to close the player down he got the rebound and was quick to react to it coming in now with Crooks just out of that picture streaking through and the pass really needed to be a little bit harder always thought of as one of the best psychological moments for a goal just before half time the initiative at the moment with Liverpool as Hansen strides forward Perryman charged down the shot and there is the half-time whistle and Tottenham will feel they've done well to be uh, holding Liverpool here to one all. <laughs> Liverpool attack the cop goal in the second half. That's Roberts playing a long one towards Archibald. Tottenham beaten in their last three games away to Birmingham and a home to West Brom in the league and then away to West Ham in the League Cup. Yeah. Hewton. Clements calling and collecting. Lacey against Johnson. Ball comes out to Lee. Lacey getting his head in the way of another one. Soonis. Hoddle beating Alan Kennedy. But couldn't keep the ball in play. Okay, 
Kennedy. Dalglish doesn't have many opportunities to show his skill turning on the edge of the box. But when he tried it then, it uh, received McAllister into a foul. Gaines, no doubt, a little bit concerned about the possibility of Irwin or Neil coming in on a late run from the far side. Soonest to Lee, who can drive them from there, and the goalkeeper couldn't hold it, but he could do enough to put Irwin off scoring. Tremendous whack there from Sammy Lee. This little man does pack a punch. Dane saw it coming, couldn't hold it. In came Irwin and Dane spread himself to deflect the ball for the corner. Header out now by Roberts to Ardiles. Fox won't make it. Dermot, Lee, Johnson, and put out a play by Hewton. Back to Lee. So once again, Liverpool working this right hand touchline. Little triangles down here, so often successful for them. Dermot, Lee, and sometimes Johnson, sometimes Neil or Dalglish. Dalglish there, and heading wide from the cross. Really whipped into that header, Kenny Dalglish. Neil delivering the cross, Dalglish up, but why? Archibald. Hoddle beaten by Alan Kennedy. And here's Johnson in. Just nicked away from him by Roberts, and it's a corner. Roberts. Soonis. Ray Kennedy. Oh, he turned well on that. minutes into the second half and the big man turned with all the agility you could possibly wish for trap on the thigh left foot and Danes left stranded that was a beauty 2-1 good long accurate ball from Graham Soonis that made it who has a special feeling about Spurs from his Arsenal days. They're getting his sixth goal this season, that is. Ardiles, Archibald, Crooks intelligently staying back. There's a free kick now for a trip by Ray Kennedy. Archibald had to try and go it alone there. Crooks just ahead of him, but Crooks would have been offside if Archibald had tried to play the pass. Huddle takes the free kick. Two defenders, Neil and Irwin, go for the header and between them get it out. Dark Leash. Lost control of it, which is rare, and he's also ripped his ankle, I think, on the... Uh, Probably on the edge of the turf on the running track. Well, a moment that came out of no danger at all. His control just for the moment let him down and trying to keep the ball in. So 
seems to have fallen awkwardly. Soonest with Archibald coming. He's a willing worker, Steve Archibald. Chases everything. Here he is going in again. Loose boot there that Mr. Seville didn't like. He kicked the Liverpool. And Liverpool are going to make a substitution. They're not going to take any chances with Kenny Dalglish. And he comes off clearly uh, carrying an ankle. And Jimmy Case takes his place. Good welcome for Jimmy Case from the cop. Danes comes for a punch. Lee, Case couldn't get into it. Lee, trip by Neil. Crooks. Two defenders to beat. Support from Hoddle. by Alan Kennedy. Ray Kennedy brings the ball away. Hoddle and Ardiles exchanging passes. Now Crooks. Hoddle again. Archibald. Ardiles. One of Tottenham's more promising attacking moves broken up eventually by Alan Hansen for Tottenham's first corner of the game. Liverpool have had 11. And Perryman is onto it. It was deflected, but the deflection took the pace of it. Steve Perryman. Soonis goes on to try to make something for Case, but Lacey clears it, and Soonis is left on the edge of the penalty area, clutching his head. And now offside against Case again. Soonis still down. It's free kick, incidentally. The 20th for offside in the game. Roberts. Case chasing it down the line. Nicely weighted pass from Soonis. And he takes the return from Case. Challenge from McAllister, but it's still Soonis. McAllister and Lacey confusing each other. Johnson trying to set it up for Soonis. He could still get it. But Dermott couldn't get there. Hewton cleared. Now it's Lee. Neil. McAllister again. Ray Kennedy and over. Tottenham were not exactly in control there, but they were just doing enough to frustrate Liverpool. Second half hasn't been as good as the first, but uh, really there's not ever looked much danger of Liverpool losing this game. Certainly not after the hour when Ray Kennedy scored. Veer. Archibald. Case. Roberts. Referee taking a check from his linesman. Ardiles. And there is the final whistle. Tottenham's long, long record of lack of success at Anfield goes on thanks to a decisive second half goal scored by Ray Kennedy. Liverpool 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1. Indeed, sadly, that must be a familiar feeling for Spurs coming away from Anfield with nothing to show for their efforts. 68 years since they won there. The Spurs captain, Steve Perryman. What were the tactics this time? Uh, we decided to, instead of playing two up front in four in midfield, our two outside midfield players, Ricky and uh, Glenn, we decided to push them up further onto the fullbacks. Uh, we feel that the fullbacks always get a lot of space to play at Anfield, and they usually destroy us with their service up to the front. 
Um, I think we made more of a game of it. Uh, I think it made the game more competitive. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the result we were looking for. Fans were a bit frustrated, I think, by the offside tactics. Well, last season we did come up here and uh, about six weeks before we played here last year, we uh, decided to play a rigid uh, back four, playing a bit square but keeping the game compact. And when we come here, perhaps through a little bit of fear, we, it turned into a, an epic offside battle. We No way did we plan that this time. But uh, if players are running into offside positions, then you're not entitled to run back with them. So after all this, do you still feel that Liverpool are the best team in the country? Uh, very much so, yeah. They think they're a fantastic team here. Uh, they get good results away from home. Uh, I can't see anyone stopping them. Interviewer Gerald Sinstad. Incidentally, news tonight of Kenny Dalglish, who went off injured as you saw. He's got a nasty ankle injury and might even be doubtful for next week's crucial match at Ipswich. <laughs> Just a quick dive now into the second division for the match between two of the leading contenders, Chelsea, who came to this match in second place, and Swansea, who were fifth. A few of the highlights then as we pick up the game in the first half, Chelsea in the dark strip. Stevenson. In a battle which he lost there to Colin Lee. Walker, a bit of space ahead for Walker. Right foot shot, charged away by Jeremy Charles, coming in quickly there. And Chelsea looked very dangerous in and Walker looked to be getting a shot on target. Well, look at Barota now. And now he might be in trouble. But the thing was way, way, way off target. Barota, seven or eight yards outside the penalty area with his header. Robbie James. Ooh. Bouncing off the keeper and Walker couldn't quite get there in time. And that was a shot with some power in it from Robbie James. Bouncing awkwardly, as you saw, just in front of the keeper. Lee's backward header, driver hoping to come in on this. And as well for Stewart that he just got a touch there. And in the end, uh, Stevenson, who can get it away. Well. Charles for Swansea. And away to Walker. A little touch there for Robinson. Picked on again. I don't think Mahoney will get there. It's locked. Going it in again. Walker's onside. Walker with the corner for Chelsea towards the near post looking for the header and they found the header all right but not the goal the defenders have gone a little too close to the ball leaving Droy with the header and it came maybe a little too quickly for him Ooh, that looked like a push there on wobble by Droy Played there for Mahoney and he did well there Crossed in and headed by Jeremy Charles. Down went uh, Barota. Walker. A chance to make it. And well saved by David Stewart. Homestead. Chivers. That's a more promising break. Chivers trying to get it on for the right foot. And a good save. Stewart, Chivers has had an exceptional game for Chelsea at the back, making such a good break there. Driver, Britain forcing himself forward as well. Walker's waiting in the middle and Lee is in there too. Can Driver get it across to them, to the byline? A good cross by him. Walker's header! And it came off Jeremy Charles and behind for the corner and it looked as though Lee might at last have got it in there. Good run here by Driver, getting it well to the byline. What a good cross as well. Knocked down there by Lee and off Jeremy Charles for another corner. Bobby 
Richardson. Getting a nice little one-two there with Robbie James. And a whisper away from snatching both points in the last moment of the game there. Uh, Neil Robinson. A really delightful one-two that he played here with Robbie James. And noted it beyond Barota, also sadly for Swansea, beyond the far post. And it finished nil-nil. Those were the highlights, and I have to say it was a pretty appalling game for the 20,000 fans. Swansea had reason to be pleased with their point, but I don't think they'd have made many friends along the way. Their manager, John Toshak, who as a player, as you probably know, was a great crowd pleaser, said afterwards, it's all right for people to say we should attack, but if we do and lose, it could put us out of a job. It's up to the home team to entertain. Well, I disagree with that, and uh, I fancy I'm not alone. In football's present climate, I can't help thinking that, well, it's almost a duty for both sides at least to try and entertain. I'd also like to think that Tosh wasn't completely serious when he said that. In any case, on uh, quite a different response, we had from Jack Charlton after Sheffield Wednesday's defeat by 2-1 at West Ham in another important and thrilling second division game. If every first and second division match was as good as this one, said Big Jack, we might see more people coming back to watch. And incidentally, 30,000 fans were at Upton Park to enjoy it, and they saw Trevor Brooking get a yellow card. Now, that must be a collector's item. Trevor, in this News of the World picture here, says, the referee's view was that it was a violent tackle from behind. His words. Well, here's how it leaves the top of the second division. West Ham stay top, just confirming that 15 home wins on the trot. That's a club record. Then Chelsea, two points behind. Notts County, who lost at Watford a third. They had striker Ian McCulloch sent off then Swansea, and of course from West Ham's point of view, their lead over the fourth club has now stretched to seven points. Now the national news from Jim. Well, Malcolm Allison still hasn't managed to send out a winning league side all season, and his Crystal Palace team are now stranded at the bottom of the first division. Palace conceded three second-half goals at Nottingham Forest, a Frankie Gray penalty, newcomer Colin Walsh and Peter Ward the scorers. And no wonder Malcolm looks so miserable in this Sunday mirror picture. And afterwards, he refused to say a word about his first match in charge. And what a change that is from the start of the season when you remember he invited the media into his team's dressing room. And you can see how serious the position is now for Palace. Ten points from 21 games, and no one has avoided relegation since three up, three down, with that total at this stage. Leicester there on 12 points after winning 2-1 at Birmingham, and Brighton on 14 after their 2-1 win over Sunderland who are just above Norwich, who drew two all with Manchester United at Carrow Road. And just off that caption now are Leeds, whose 2-1 win at West Bromwich Albion really was one of the day's big surprises, and Manchester City, they drew one all with Ipswich at Main Road. There's a familiar name back among the goals today, Kevin Hector, top scorer still playing in the league. Hector scored his first goal for three years in Derby County's 3-0 win at Preston, and that makes 259 in all. Well, still to come tonight, thrills in the snow as Middlesbrough face Aston Villa at Ayrson Park. And that's after the break. And welcome back. And for our third match tonight, it's Middlesbrough against the team at the top, Aston Villa at Ayrson Park. The pictures are from Ty and T's television. The commentator is Roger Thames. League leaders Aston Villa make their first change for six games today. David Geddes replaces the suspended Peter With to link up an attack with Gary Shaw, whose 14 goals have made him one of the striking sensations of the season. Middlesbrough stick to the side that should have played at Ipswich last week. Jankovic and McAndrew are still both out, so David Shearer stays in attack. Irving Natras moves to the centre of the defence and John Craggs returns at right back to take on the captaincy on this, his 375th league appearance for the Borough. This afternoon's referee is Michael Peck from Kendall. Middlesbrough in the all-red strip, kick-off attacking the goal to our right, Aston Villa who've changed to an all-white strip. Ayrson Park have been a little bit of a graveyard for Aston Villa who haven't won here for 20 years. In fact, Middlesbrough have won five of the last six meetings between these two teams. But with Aston Villa currently rampant at the top of the table, surely tradition will be put to the test this afternoon. Patris wide for Ian Bailey for Middlesbrough. Johnston getting forward. Some awkward ricochets there. And Gordon Cowan's the... Getting the challenge fair on Mark Proctor. And a free kick to Middlesbrough in the first minute. 
Middlesbrough, of course, have only lost once at home this season to Birmingham. But they really will be looking to push up the table at the moment in 13th position. Armstrong takes it, curls it in, and Jimmy Rimmer was at full stretch then. But David Armstrong shot just drifting wide. Hodgson, oh, he's been given a second go at that one. Looking for Cochrane, but Gary Williams whacking it clear. It is challenging. Shaw brought that one down well, but the ball didn't find Morley. Rags is away. So too is Johnston. Cochrane's going outside of him. Johnston, oh, he's hit the post. What a shot from Johnston. That really was a cracking drive absolutely out of nowhere. Mortimer, Bremner. Bremner again. The ball inside to Cowens. And a neat little layoff for Gary Shaw. Oh, that was a good effort from Shaw. You can see there why he's got 14 goals this season. Hardly any room at all for him to move in then, but he jinked one way, opened up the gap, and his left foot shot drifting away from Jim Platt. Evans jumping there, but it's fallen for David Armstrong. It's a good ball through to Hodgson but cut out and Proctor could be in here and the Middlesbrough players frantically appealing for a penalty there Evans whipped the ball away to safety Proctor it was who was bundled over there quite a little melee developing in the penalty area but the result of it is a corner to Middlesbrough oh that one nearly crept through I think everybody including Jimmy Rimmer was expecting Terry Cochran to cross it towards the far post. He just slipped it through the middle there and Rimmer had to clutch it. Johnston having to wait for support. Crags it is in the middle. One for Armstrong. Brought it down well, but Bremner just got a foot in. But that was a lovely piece of control by David Armstrong. And a really good ball out of defence from Crags. And as a result, the Borough get a free kick. Strong still ordering players about as he pumps it forward. Cochrane! Well, Rimmer stopped that one right on the line. And half the crowd behind that goal and half the Middlesbrough team as well thought that one was in the back of the net. David Armstrong's really cleverly flighted free kick. Coming in there and in came Cochrane, but Rimmer plucked it back. The snow there away on the Cleveland Hills confirming the weather we've had in the region here today. And I suppose Ayrson Park can count itself lucky that the snow that put off the Newcastle match hasn't motored down the A19 to call off this one as well. Swain. First time flick from Geddes, Mortimer. It is again. Bailey's there. He got the shot in well. Good effort that from David Geddes. Certainly worked hard to try and make the most of the opportunity he's got today. He was involved in the move. And he got it back again. Brought it down well. And got his shot in as well. But Platt did equally well. Good turn by Gary Shaw. Oh, that was inches wide. A lovely piece of work by Gary Shaw, that was. So quick to cash in on a little bit of space he had. Turned his man and opened up the room for himself, and uh, then he was away. 
and that shot just past that far post. Here goes Hodgson again. Shearer, the only red shirt in the middle. Shearer! Oh, off the line! Well, how close can you get? A really great run down the right by David Hodgson. And he got his cross in. Shearer was the only man in the middle. And nothing wrong with his header. Left river flat-footed, but Evans was there. Hodgson. Hodgson with another go. Shearer protesting that he was fouled by Swain. But still, the openings won't come for Middlesbrough. Morley with a fairly optimistic effort. Johnston finished off. 38 minutes gone now. Middlesbrough take the lead. Craig Johnston scores his ninth goal of the season. And that really has altered the complexion of this game. Middlesbrough 1, Aston Villa 0. Now the score. Seven minutes for the Villa to try and pull back a point. From Middlesbrough's point of view, it certainly looked as that goal was never going to come. Well, they say you can't keep a good man down and you can't keep Craig Johnston down this season. What can Aston Villa produce now? Mortimer. Shaw through the middle. And it's there. Gary Shaw's done it again. He really is a goal machine. And Middlesbrough were vulnerable as they were still celebrating. Good positive run through the middle by Mortimer, but there was Gary Shaw all on his own, acres of space. He kept cool and Jim Platt had no chance. And as the snow comes down, Gary Shaw scores his 12th league goal of the season to make it Middlesbrough 1, Aston Villa 1. And the snow really is absolutely driving in now. Only got uh, a little under four minutes to last out. Here's DC, the substitute. Mortimer now. Will he go it alone? Couldn't get the power behind his shot. 
Johnston. Bailey now. Bailey with the throw. Bailey again. Good turn. Shearer, he scored! Great goal by Shearer! Well, what a finish we've had here at Erson Park. Ian Bailey up there. Opening well worked. Game for Shearer, first time, no problem at all, right in the back of the net. Well, it was a rousing finish, and it was a defeat that knocks Aston Villa off the top place in the first division. And for the first time there this season, we have Liverpool just ahead on goal difference. Third are Ipswich, fourth are Arsenal, who dropped that home point to, to Wolves, but were helped, of course, by the fact that West Brom in fifth place lost at home to Leeds. But tonight on the big match, we've seen a significant change at the top of the first division. We've seen Villa beaten and so lose their place at the top. We've seen Liverpool win and bang on the halfway mark in the season. They are now number one. Can anyone shift them now? Good night. Hansen setting off on a run. Phil Neal covering for him in the middle. The ball comes loose to Alan Kennedy. Now Johnson. But Dermot back to Johnson. Johnson's shot. In 1 0. Soonis. Ray Kennedy. Oh, he turned well on that. 